So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you very much for joining us. Um, seek your good wishes and your blessings so that we can continue with the uh, Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 21. And this is verse number 16. Savaite pyo namaskrutya nisango vikata spasha vasudeve bhagavati bhaktya chakre malaparam. King Granti Dev had no ambition to enjoy material benefits from the demigods. He offered them obeisances. But because he was factually attached to Lord Shiva, Vishnu, Vasudev, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he fixed his mind at the Lord's lotus feet. So an amazing chapter, this one. The dynasty of Bharat. This chapter describes the dynasty born, born from Maharaj Bharat. And it also describes the glories of Ranti Dev. Ajamita and others, the austerities of Ranti Dev. So, this is uh, the how he came about in the dynasty of Bharadvaja, uh, Bharadvaja, also known as Vitata, who had the son Manu, and they had he had five children, um, Pratakshatra. Jaya, Mahavirya, Nara, and Garga. Nara had Sankriti, and they had two children, Guru and Ranti Dev. So, as an exalted devotee, Ranti Dev saw every living entity in relation with the Supreme Lord. Therefore, he completely engaged his mind, his words, and his very self in the service of the Lord and his devotees. He was so exalted that although he was penniless, now, remember, he was a king as well, but he always gave his wealth away. So he was penniless. And he would even give away his own food in charity. And he and his family would fast. Once, Ratti there fasted for 48 days. And then excellent food made with ghee was brought to him at the end of the 48th day. But when he was about to eat it, he received various guests, one after the other. A first, a Brahman guest appeared. Prantidev, therefore, did not eat the food. Instead, he immediately offered a portion of it to the Brahman. And when the Brahman left, Prantidev was about to eat the remnants of the food. Just then, a Shudra appeared. Prantidev, therefore, divided the remnants between the Shudra and himself. Again, when he was about to eat the remnants of the food, another guest appeared, a dog keeper, surrounded by his dogs, came and he was asking for food. And Rantidev offered the balance of the food to the dogs and to the master of the dogs. This is incredible generosity. He's been fasting for 48 days, remember. <laughs> Thereafter, only drinking water remained. And that was enough only to satisfy one person. But when the king was about to drink it, a chandala appeared and pleaded for some drinking water. So this is a really heavy test that Rantidev was put through. So what did he do? Aggrieved at the plight of the chandala, Maharaj Rantidev said, that he does not pray to the Lord for the eight perfections of mystic yoga, nor for salvation from repeated birth and death, but prays to stay amongst all the living entities and suffer all distresses on their behalf. He was so uh, aggrieved at the situation of this chandala who was begging just for water so that they may be freed from suffering. By offering water to maintain the life of the poor Chandala who is struggling to live, he, Ranti Dev, is freed from all hunger, thirst, fatigue, trembling of the body, moroseness, distress, lamentation, and illusion. So this is the thing about giving. When one gives, one gets. So we may think we're losing by giving something, but you can see from this example, Ranti Dev gave even the water that he had been fasting from for so many days. He gave it away. He could have drunk it. 
saying to the channel, no, I'm thirsty now. <laughs> but he gave it away. And he, this, in the Bhagavatam, it says he's freed from all hunger, thirst, etc. In this way, even though he himself was on the verge of death, Prantidev gave all the water to the Chantan. <laughs> so then, all these personalities were revealing themselves. The demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva manifested their own identities before King Rantidev. So the Shudra, the Brahman, the Chandala, the doorkeeper, they were all demigods. For it was they who had presented themselves as the Brahman, Shudra, Chandalas, and so on. Being pleased with Rantidev, they offered benedictions. But like we read in the verse, Rantidev had no ambition to enjoy material benefits from the demigods. And Maya could not touch him. He offered them obeisances, but because he was factually attached to the Lord Vishnu, he fixed his mind at Lord Vishnu's lotus feet. This is perfection, absolute perfection. Because he could have asked for anything. Brahma and Lord Shiva can give practically anything he wanted. Hmm. All those who, are f f f those, those who follow followed the principles of Rantidev, his citizens, were totally favored by his mercy and also became pure devotees, attached to the Supreme Personality of God at Narayan. Thus, they all became the best of yogis. Very, very amazing pastime, Rantidev. Rantidev ki jai. Garga, the son of Bharadwaja, had a son uh, named Sini, and Sini's son was Gagya. Although Gagya was a Kshatriya by birth, his sons became Brahmins. The son of Mahavirya was Duritakshaya, whose sons were Triyaruni, Kavi, and Pushkaruni. Although these three sons were born of a Kshatriya king, they also achieved the position of Brahmins. The son of uh, Brahatshatra constructed the city of Hastinapur and was also known as Hasti. So the son was known as Hasti and he constructed the city called Hastinapur. That's very interesting. So who is he? Let's have a look. I can remember where he was. His son. His son was Hasti who created Hastinapur. Very interesting. Ah, here he is. Paradwaj, uh, Manu, the, the five sons, and then Hasti is here. Very good. So we talked a little, we talked a lot about uh, Ranti Dev, and we talked a little bit about these personalities as well. Hasti's sons were Ajamita, Dvi Mita, and Puru Mita. From Ahalya, by her husband Gautam, Satanda, Sata Nanda was born. The son of Satananda was Satyadriti, and his son was Sharadwan. Sharadwan. Sharadwan's son was known as Kripa, and Sharadwan's daughter was known as Kripi, who became the wife of Dronacharya. So this is very interesting. So this is um, quite a tree from Hasti. We've got, um, the three sons of Hasti, and here, down here, all the way down here, through the son of the, the dynasty of Nila, came Kripa and Kripi. Hmm. What else is there? Any pretty interesting? Don't really know too many of these personalities. So that's end of uh, chapter 21. Anybody, any questions, any comments? Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, my goodness. It's big verses, two verses here, 22. Ah, good. Our <laughs> worst reciter is here. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sapan Matuna Rudasha Pandu Kuntia Maharataha Jata Dharmani Lindi Opio 
Yudhishthira Mukhastraya Nakula Sadevas Jamadriyam Nashatya Dasharayo Tropadhyam Pancha Panchabhyo Putras De Pitaro Bhavan Pandu was restrained from sexual life because of having been cursed by a sage, and therefore his three sons, Yudhishthira, Bhim, and Arjun, were begotten to the womb of his wife, Kunti, by Dharamraj, by the demigod controlling the wind, and by the demigod controlling the rain. Pandu's second wife, Madri, gave birth to Nakul and Sahadev, who were begotten by the two Ashwini Kumars. The five brothers, headed by Yudhishthira, begot five sons to the womb of Draupadi. These five sons were your uncles. Mm. So <clears throat> we're coming closer to the end of chapter of Canto 9. There's two more chapters after this one. And um, Maharaj uh, Parikshit is being explained about his dynasty now. And the descendants of Atamita is the title of the chapter. Describes the dis descendants of uh, Divodhas. And it describes Jarasant, who belongs to the Raksha uh, dynasty, as well as the Ryoda and Arjuna and others. Oops, that's uh, not quite right. <laughs> the son of Divodash, Divodas was Mrityayu, who had four sons, one after the other. Shyavan, Shudas, Sahadev, Shomak. Shomak had a hundred sons, of whom the youngest was Prasata from whom Draupad was born. Draupadi's daughter, Draupad's daughter was Draupadi, and his sons were headed by Drastadumna. Drastadumna's son was Drastaketu. Aha. Uh, we've basically talked to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, Draupad, Draupadi. Draupad. Draupad. Uh, Drastadumna, Drastaketu. Another son of Ajamita, who is the son of Hasti. So we saw that big um, dynasty of Hasti. So he had, I think, three children. So this is another son, was uh, Raksha. From Raksha came a son, Samvarna. From Samvarna came Kuru, the king of Kurukshetra. Kuru had four sons, Parikshi. Shudhanu, Janu, and Nishada. Among the descendants in the dynasty from Shudhanu were Sohotra, Chayanvana, oh. Kriti, and Upachira, Pashu. <laughs> okay. The sons of Upachira, Vashu, including Brihadrat, Kusumba, Matsya, Pratyagra, and Jedapi, became kings of the Jedi state. In the dynasty of Brihadrat came Kushagra, Rishabh, Satyahata, Hita, Pushpavan, and Jahu. And from Brihadrata, through the womb of another wife came Jarasan. When the mother saw these two halves, she rejected them. But later a she-demon named Jara playfully joined them and said, come to life, come to life. Thus the son named Jarasan was born. Mm. Yes, Riyanj. Puri Jara means that the, the demoness and Sanda means uh, in the corner. He was born in the corner and uh, was attached by Jara. That's why his name became such I thought Jarasan. Jarasan. Jara is definitely the demon, but because she put them together, Jara Sand. Sand, what does Sand mean? Corner, you think, huh? I thought it was putting together, but fair enough. Very good. Thank you, Riyaj. Oh, ah, yeah, you've gone through, we've gone through mm -hmm. these. Yeah, we've gone through all of these. And then Jarasan, Sahadev, Somapi, Shruta Shrava. Uh, so this is Jarasan's son, Sahadev. When Krishna or rather being killed Jarasan, they installed Sahadev as the king. He was actually a very pious soul. Jarasan's son was very pious. 
then the descendants of Janu. Janu, Shurata, Vidurat, Sarvaboma, Jayasen, Radhika, Ayatayu, Godana, Devati, Riksha, Dilipa, and Patipa. Okay, sons of Janu, son of Kuru. Terasan son was Sade, Fusano Sumapi. We've just been through that. Um, and we've just been through that as well. The reign of Shantanu, the son of Pratipa. Pratipa were sons were Devapi, Shantanu, Bhalika. Devapi left the kingdom of his father and went to the forest. And therefore, Shantanu became the king. So Shantanu is famous, right? He married, who did he marry? Anybody remember? Who did Shantanu marry? Did he marry Ganga? Yeah, uh, yeah, good. Uh, so Shantanu um, became the king. Shantanu, who was in his previous birth known as Mahabisha, had the ability to transform anyone from old age to youth simply by touching that person with his hands. His name uh, was Shantanu uh, because he was able to make everyone happy. Shantanu, Shantanu. Yes, Riyanj. First, I want to say another thing that uh, Shantai includes uh, happiness and peace. Very, oh yes, yes, good, good. Shant, be peaceful. Once when there was no rainfall in the kingdom for 12 years, that's a long time, the king consulted his learned Brahminical advisors and they said, you are faulty for enjoying the property of your elder brother, Devapi. For the elevation of your kingdom and home, you should return the kingdom to him but he'd ran away to the forest. So Santanu went to the forest and he requested Devapi to take charge of the kingdom. But there's a little bit of uh, intrigue here. Previously, however, Shantanu's minister, Ashwara, had instigated some Brahmins to induce Devapi to transgress the injunctions of the Vedas and thus made himself unfit for the post of ruler. Therefore, when asked by Shantanu, he did not agree to accept the rule, the position of ruler, sorry. And he also started insulting Shantanu and the Vedic traditions. So under the circumstances, Shantanu again became the king and Indra being pleased, showered rains. Devapi later took to the path of mystic yoga and con to control his mind and senses and went to the village named Kalapa Gram, where he is still living. So I'm not sure where that is, but uh, Devapi is still present on this earth. Then we have the past times of a uh, very transcendental pastime of uh, great personality. In this Kali Yuga, when the descendants of Shro Shro Soma, known as Chandravamsi, the lunar dynasty, die out. Devapi, at the beginning of Satya Yuga, will re-establish the dynasty of the moon. So it's quite an important personality. The wife of Shantanu named Ganga gave birth to Bhishma, one of the 12 authorities. Bhishma was the greatest warrior. When he defeated Lord Parshuram due to the kidnapping of the three daughters of Kashi and one of the Do's daughters, Amba, uh, insisted that Bhishma marry her because she was neither here nor there. She was already attached to the king, but because Bhishma had taken her by force, that king rejected her. Nor did Vichitavidya um, um, accept her. So she was nowhere. So she said to Bhishma, you marry me now. And she even petitioned Parshuram for help. Pushuram being the spiritual master of Bhishma. He had many spiritual masters. One of them was Pushuram. And he fought so well with Pushuram that Pushuram became very pleased with Bhishma. <laughs> By the seaman of Santanu in the womb of Satyavati, Chitrangad 
was born, took birth. Two sons named Chitrangad and Vichitabiriya were also born from the womb of Satyavati, oops, the daughter of a fisherman by the semen of Saint. You know. Chitrangad was killed by a Gandharva who was also named Chitrangad. So this Gandharva was very envious of Chitrangad. So he killed him. A very unfortunate end to this uh, young man. Then Vichitravirya, uh, Bhishma brought the three princesses to marry. And he married two of them, Ambika and Ambalika. But because he was so attached to them, he had a heart attack and he died of tuberculosis. So it was a really unfortunate end to both the sons. So Satyavati was in a, 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 a confused state. What to do now? How do we carry on the dynasty? Now she had a son previously, Vyas Dev, born by the semen of Parasara Muni. And she requested Vyas Dev to continue the dynasty through the womb of the two wives, Ambika and Ambalika. Now, um, so what happened? When Vyas Dev approached uh, Ambika, she closed her eyes. <laughs> the Tarastra was born blind. Ambalika became very frightened and became white. Pandu was similarly white. And they wanted them to try again with Vyas Dev, but they sent their maid instead. And from the maid came the wise Vidur, Yamraj's incarnation. Vyasdev instructed the history of the Bhagavatam to his son Sukadev. So Sukadev is actually speaking, <laughs> speaking this. The Tarastra had 100 sons headed by Duryodhan and also one daughter named Dushala. And then we look at the words that we read. Pandu was um, restrained from sexual life because of having been cursed by a sage. And the Pandavas were born as follows, through the womb of Kunti, there was Yudhisthir begetted by Dharamraj, Lord of Religion. Bhim was begetted by Vayu, the wind god. Arjun was begetted by Indra, king of heaven. And through Pandu's second wife, Madri, gave birth to Nakul Sahadev, the two Ashwini Kumar, Kumaras. The five brothers, uh, also, they begot five sons through the womb of Draupadi, who they married later. These five sons are Parikshit Maharaj's uncles, and they're named Matiritya, Shruta Shena, Shruta Kirti, Satanika, Shruta Karma. Well done. Furthermore, <laughs> Yudhisthira and his brothers begot other sons and other wives. Yudhisthira begot a son, Devaka. Devak. Oh, sorry, Devak. Through? Poravi. Poravi. Yes, Riyan. Or Prabhuji, that the five sons were at the Maha at the end of Mahabharat. They were killed by Ashwadha. Yes. Because Ashwadha was daughter, that is, or the Pandavas. But what it was the sons? Very good. Beam Sam, we caught got. Gotokchka, very interesting personality through Hidimba and the son Sarvagata through Kali. Sahadev because Shohotra through Vijaya, the daughter of the king of mountains. Nakul because a son Narmitra through his wife Nirenumati. Arjun because a son Iravan through Ulupi. Haven't heard of them. Huh? The daughter mm -hmm. of the Nags and the son named Babruvarna by the womb of the princess of Manipur. Raji, yes, Iravan was uh, killed in the battlefield. Iravan, really, by who? Mm, I did not. Uh, I heard it was by Karna. Oh, yeah, you may be right. Interesting. Very good, good. We have to keep a lookout when we go, if we go through the Mahabharata, these names. 
Parikshit Maharaj's father, Abhimanyu. So <laughs> he's telling him, sitting in front of Parikshit, telling him, you were born from the womb of Shubhata as a son of Arjun. No, sorry, your father was born from the womb of uh, Shubhada as a son of Arjun. And he, Parikshit, was born from the womb of Uttara, the daughter of Viradraj. Parikshit, you have four children, Janam Jaya, Janam Jaya, Shuddha Sena, Bhima Sena, and Ugra Sena. Oh, okay. Because of Parikshit's death, and this is the prediction of the future. Because of your death by the Takchak snake, your son, Janamedi Jaya, will be very angry and perform a sacrifice to kill all the snakes in the world. After conquering throughout the world and after accepting Tura, the son of uh, Kalasha, as his priest, Janamedi Jaya will perform Ashmadeya Yagyas, for which he'll be known as Taruga Medhasha. From Janamedya would come a son named Satanika. Okay, oh, for you. And following the dynasty would be Sahasranika, Ashwamedwaj, Ashim Krishna, Nemik Chakra, Chitrarat, Suchirat, Rishtiman, Susena, Sunita, Nirik Chakshu, Shukhinale, Pariplava, Sunaya, Medavi, Nipanjaya, Dhruva, Timi, Vihadrata, Sudasha, Satanika, Dudaman, Mahinara, Nandapani, Nimi, and Shemata. Wow. There they are. <laughs> There's a lot of them. So this is one after the other, one after the other. And then the last monarch, Shemaka. Yeah, sorry. Okay. The descendants of the Pandavas. Sukadev Goswami then predicted the kings of the Magad, Magad, Mag, Magda. Magad. Magad. Dynasty. Sahadev, the son of Jarasan, would be got Marjari. And from him would come Shutra Shrava. Subsequently, taking birth in the dynasty would be Yuta, Yutahu, Niramitra, Sunukshat, Shatra, Prihatsena, Karamjit, Stanijaya, Vipra, Suchi, Shema, Suvrata, Dharmashutra, Sama, Dumatsena, Sumati, Shubal, Sunita, Satyajit, Vishwajit, and Rupanjia. Okay. Oh. It's quite a dynasty. This is the prediction. One of these amazing personalities. This is after Parikshit Maharaj passes away. His grandsons, great grandsons, etc. So that's the end of chapter 22. Srimad Bhagavatam Kijay. Any questions? Any comments? Quite tough chapters in terms of uh, just names of uh, kings. Sukadev Goswami recalls <coughs> and predicts in the future. Okay, uh, we can read this. Maybe Kamakshi, would you like to read? Uh, I think Madhusudan Prabhu was not with us. Yeah, okay, Prabhu. Okay. I hope I can read it. It's too small. I've got my mobile with me. Oh, <laughs> my son's okay. Dad. Yeah, okay, I can, I'll, I'll have to be, be okay, hurry bol. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. <clears throat> Hare Krishna to everyone. Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport that Ranti Dev perceived the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in every living being, but he never thought that because the Supreme Lord is present in every living being, every living being must be God. Nor did he distinguish between one living being and another. He perceived the presence of the Lord both in the Brahm, Brahman and in the Kandala. This is a true vision of equality as confirmed by the Lord himself in Bhagavad Gita chapter 518. 5, verse 18. 518. Yeah. 
Vidya Vidya Vina Sumpar Sumpane Brahman Kavihastani Sunni Chavasa Paki Cha Pandita Sama Darshana. The humble sage, by virtue of the true knowledge, sees with equal vision a learned and a gentle Brahman, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater. Later, he clarifies the idea of uh, the idea that because Nar Narayan is present in the heart of one who is uh, Daridra or poor, the poor man should be called Daridra Narayan. Is a is a wrong conception. By such logic, because the Lord is present within the hearts of the dogs and hogs, the dogs and the hogs would also be Narayan. One should not mistakenly think that Pandit Devi subscribed to, the, to this view. So just because God is in everything does not mean everything has become God. Just like the heat and light are in the fire does not mean it has become the sun while emanates heat and light. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> chapter 22. This chapter gives the ba background to the even Sukadev Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit and predictions of future of Moon Dynasty every after end of the Kali Yuga. Srila Prabhupada specifically mentions the kingdom of Manipura as a Vaishnav state. In Vrindavan and Navadvip, there are many temples constructed by the king of Manipur. Some of, your, some of our devotees belong to the Manipur state. The Krishna conscious movement, therefore, can be well spread in the state of Manipur by the cooperative effect, efforts of the Krishna conscious devotees. Hare Krishna. Is Thank you it? so much. Fantastic. Thank you. Jimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Tomorrow we finish the ninth canto, hopefully. Uh, it's a long chapter, actually, especially the last chapter. Very interesting chapter. So if anybody, if you get a chance, please do read it. Um, and then for the next uh, three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will go through all the different questions from canto one up to canto nine. That's the very nice the quiz uh, the quiz through chitra and uh, karuna so hope that's okay with everybody um, but it's good to refresh ourselves again and again these nine cantos before we enter into the tenth canto so monday it's um near Jalikadashi. oh yeah monday is uh near Jalikadashi, so i think it's the same in mauritius probably i think it's the same yeah. everywhere so yes, very good. So um that should be the hopefully everybody should do it without any water. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy, but we can try. All right, so let's go to the Nishinga coverage. Yeah. <laughs> Krishna. You know, <laughs> I just cut and paste it everywhere. <laughs> oh, we should have got to do this as well at some point. Oh, we should have been recording.